Hey guys, I have my seventh battle here, and um, bear with the top left hand corner dot. It doesn't affect the battle, but it's just annoying. So I just um, and it's just a glitch on my webcam or dot. So I leave off with Trimeca, go for the trick, crippling the Oxy into forcing it to use Stealth Rock. So it has to switch out. Just go for the safe sidekick, knowing that the Oxy won't stay, and even if it does, it can't do anything. And there's a surprisingly good amount to a lantern, knowing it's got great HP and great special defense. So I switch into my Clayball, knowing it can take any move by lantern, take no damage. Plus, if it goes for a status, Clayball's magic card negates all status's effects, excluding paralysis. Uh, still halves the speed, but I can't get paralyzed or para. Yeah, I can't get fully paralyzed. So I, knowing that he would switch into counter, I just go for the toxic, hopefully crippling it. Switch into Play doll predicting the fighting move from a hit on top, since it's obvious, and even and um, knowing it won't do much, and knowing that it can't touch it, excluding a uh, sucker punch possibly. As this is a trick room clay doll, and it's life orb and got earthquake, which is stam, and it does over half to Azumarill, which has decent defense, like almost swampert like, but it's obviously not uh, EV'd in that way. Switching the close to knowing he can take pretty much all moves as Zumaril carry, excluding the focus punch, but I doubt that they would have predicted that. And since Cloyster has the skill link ability, um, all f moves hit five times, in a new generation it has the shell uh, break, I believe it's called in the translation, which doubles its attack, doubles its special attack, doubles its speed, with just the cost of uh, lowering its defense. Uh, by defenses by one stage. So he goes back at the lantern, takes a hefty amount from the rock blast, um, since it is life orb 2. Uh, Switch to Fable, knowing it can take all the hits and just go for the wish. Uh, just scouting, seeing if he has any other counters to this. And here I plan to switch to Fable, just my thought process. Heal it up, go for the Trick Room, um, Earthquake or Explode, and switch to Clamp Out, having four turns of Trick Room up. Once the four turns are up, uh, because Camper is great with its deep seep tooth item, its special attack is over 600. And in the trick room, it's the fastest thing you can think of. So that's what I go for here. And um, now I go for the earthquake. And it doesn't do as much as I would have liked, but due to the bulk of it, does a decent amount still. He goes for the range. I don't know why he doesn't just go for the sucker punch again. Maybe predicting a switch. Um, not too sure. But here I know he's going to predict the offensive move. So I just switch out and go into Chimeco. This was probably the wrong decision. Uh, since I forgot about the trick crew. And how Chimeco is reasonably fast. Knowing that it would lose the speed since the trick room is up. Should have just probably gone to Cloyster. Knowing that I could take out... Uh, any counter and then second turn after I've taken out it or I could just explode really see I go for the sidekick but now I'm paralyzed I'm actually faster due to the trick room so I just go for the sh safe shadow ball um, just not over predict well slightly over predicting but knowing it will kill it either way and just going for it so this battle shows that how any team can work well together in a way such as the trick room um, and yeah, such as Trick Room, and you can just have one thing as a support and use the rest as uh, sweeping or as extra support. So here I get the paralysis, so I was just going to go for Psyche, it would have probably taken it down to about half, made it easier to KO, but Corsola is also pretty good, and I just go for the Toxic here, predicting a switch, and it would have been safe either way, because the only move that Azumarill can really touch uh, this Corsola is Focus Punch and that's an unlikely move. So yeah, I just go for a crab, but not just scouting what move it will do. Maybe Thunderbolt, I know I could take it. So yeah, I just switch to Fable knowing that it won't do anything. And I probably just go for the Wish again, predicting a switch um, into a counter. Um, he goes for Mortras. Unfortunately, since this is a random team, I didn't have any Stealth Rock. Um, Available, Claydol could have laid it up, but it wasn't the greatest choice. So the Moltres' is life orb goes for Uton, so I know it's not Scarf Raining, which will be useful later in the game, since power is knowledge in everything. And so once you know what their moveset is, 
you know what they're going to do. So here, I should have really gone for the protect, but I was being an idiot and didn't because I was being an idiot. Um, so I just let Clefable die or faint, which wasn't really the best choice. I should have just switched to something as death fodder, really, because Clefable is the only thing, as you'll see later, which resists or doesn't take super effective damage from one very special thing. So I switch into uh, Cloyster knowing it's going to be faster than uh, Azumarill since they are very slow and Cloyster is reasonably fast so I just explode here. Critical hit was absolutely useless. Life or explosion is pretty powerful for a max attack Cloyster. Switch into Claydol here and damn he has a little terror. And since all my guys are weak to grass and none can take it. It's uh, end game, and since Corsola is quite weak to it, it definitely cannot take it. So that's the game there. It looks like a shell bomb from the back, but yeah. So yeah, it just shows that my alphabet guys have major weaknesses because I can't choose what resistances and weaknesses they have. But it still shows how they can work well together. So hope you enjoyed the battle. Please comment, rate, and subscribe, and I will see you in the near future.